Hi there folks, welcome back to a new tutorial by myself, Mr. Feudal. I just want to take this opportunity to say thanks everybody who commented on the MMO video, who liked it, even disliked it. That's probably my most popular video at the moment, which is pretty crazy because I've not been doing this in quite a while. But I've, I took my time with it, it worked, and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. So without further ado, this is how to get started in Life is Feudal. Welcome guys to a new tutorial. Yep, I've not done this in a while, but we're going to do it. So this tutorial is basically going to cover the how-tos and the initial start of the game of Life is Feudal. So I'm going to show you exactly where you spawn in. When you spawn in to a new server or your new single player map, you will start down there. You will start down there or possibly over here, over here, you might start over here, you might even start up here. There's any you can spawn in absolutely anywhere anywhere. It is absolutely random. But the first thing you really want to do is yeah, open up your map. Open up your map. Find out where you want to build. Find out where you really want to make your castle, your village, where you want to make your presence known. So from here you're probably going to ask yourself, right, what resources am I going to require to build my camp, to build my fort, to build my village? There are a few very important resources that you need to take into consideration here. The first of which is wood. Now that is readily available, as you can see, there's a hunk load of trees, and if you look across the map, there's absolutely boatloads of trees that you can cut down and refine into planks, billets, and logs. Next one you're going to have to look for is this stuff. See this stuff right here, this yellow crack in the ground? That is clay. Clay is a very, very important resource as it builds your walls, it builds your buildings, it also crafts additional uh, crafting stations. And this is exactly what it looks like. So when you discover this stuff, you've hit gold, really. The next thing you want to look for is stone. Now, stone's pretty easy to come by, it's pretty easy to identify as well. Now, there's stone here, as you can see these grey patches. You want to look for these, and I'll show you exactly what they look like. I'll show you up here. Stone is a very, very important resource. What the hell is that? That's a boar, I'm going to back away from that. If you encounter any wild animals, such as boars, or hinds, or anything like that, stay clear of them. Boars especially, because they are very aggressive creatures. So I'm going to avoid him. So let's run up here. Up here, as you can see, there it is. This is what stone looks like. Stone looks like this. And this is exactly what you'll need. Underneath this stone is the possibility of ore. Iron ore, copper ore, silver or gold. You want to focus on iron or copper early on in the game. Now the way you do this is by prospecting, but I will cover that in another tutorial. So the first thing covered is location. Where are you going to build? Plan your route, plan where you're going to build. Does it, have, does it have clay? Does it have water? Does it have wood available? Does it have stone available? Is there any iron ore or copper ore available? These are things you have to ask yourself, but we won't compl complicate it too much. Next thing you're going to ask yourself is, I've got no tools. How the hell do I get tools? So, tools. Primitive tools. These are the three ingredients, the three main ingredients in making primitive tools. So, these are branches. You snap these off of trees. This is plant fire. You do this by punching the ground. I'm not joking, you punch the ground. This is flint stones, not Fred Flintstone. This is flint. Flint is used to create fires but also create primitive tools. Now because we're near stone, I'm going to show you exactly how you get flint. You right click the tile that has the stone on it, you go down to nature's lore, and you click on search for a useful flint stone. Mass produce this, you will need a lot of them. I already have a few. Uh oh, sounds like my friend's in trouble. But as you can see there, 
we managed to get a flintstone. He is really annoying that boar. Anyway, the next thing we need is plant fibre. This straw looking material here. I'm just going to pl place this on top of here to stack them. You can do that, you can stack. You can also, sh if you hold shift and left click on your any item in your inventory that's stacked, you can shift and then you can split that stack. Next thing we want to get is plant fiber. So right click a grassy area on the ground. Go down to nature's lore. We want to gather plant fiber. Mass produce this as I said. We want to get as much as we possibly can or you will. I've already got around 15 now. So you saw that. I've received one plant fiber and in my system log it says I have received one plant fiber and my nature's lore has also increased. Nature's lore is the dominant skill that you will need to use in order to craft additional things. Same with artisan, but as again, I will cover that in a different tutorial. Now, nature's lore. This is the skill that acquires our flintstones, our plant fiber, and also our branches. Run up to a tree, right click it. Go down to nature's lore, snap off a branch, mass produce that stuff. We're going to need a lot of sticks, or you're going to need a lot of sticks, should I say, because we're going to be creating our first primitive tools. So I'm going to gather two more branches here. There we go. I've gathered two branches. Now, if you've closed your inventory, press I again. Right-click on the branch. Go down to Artisan, this one right here. Create a primitive tool. Now, the first tool we want to create is an axe. This is going to be allow us to cut down trees to refine into logs, billets, and planks. So as you can see, I've just crafted it. There it is there. All its glory. Next tool we're going to craft is a saw. We're going to craft a saw. This is going to allow us to refine it. So this is to chop it down. This is to refine it. So here we go. There we go. We've got our tool. We've got our saw. Next one we're going to make as a shovel, I call it a wooden spoon because it looks exactly like a wooden spoon. So we'll create a wooden spoon. Boom, there we go. Now, this allows you to terraform the land. This allows you to alter the land. I'm gonna let you in a wee secret here. If you press F3, these are the levels of the land. Now you can see as they go, as land rises, the numbers increase. As you can see, that is level 33.6. And the level I'm standing on right now is level 31.2. Now you can alter these. You can alter stone though. That is solid. You can alter dirt. You can alter clay. You can alter sand. You can alter snow. This is very important when it comes to building your first house. Okay, so let's get back to creating our tools. Let's create a primitive tool. So the next one we want to create it's a pickaxe. This is going to allow us to gather stone. Stone is very useful as it creates walls, buildings. It also creates a few of your primitive tools. So there we go. We've got our pickaxe. Easy peasy, right? Now we're going to make a sickle. Sickles are used to gather wild plants for farming and also herbs for creating alchemy potions. So there we go, we've got our sickle. Next one we want to make is a knife. Now this is for purely a uh, bow craft, carpentry, and also for hunting. Now see when you hunt an animal, if you manage to down an animal and kill it, you will need something to open it up to skin it with. You use your knife. You will need your knife equipped. So I've actually just ran out of flint stones, but you can see there is a range of different tools that you can create here. You can even create a torch. You need one flint, three fiber, and one branch. You can create a sling. A sling is your primitive missile weapon. It is the first weapon that will actually deal damage to geared players. I am not advocating that new players rise up and try and challenge geared players. You will not win. I guarantee that. <laughs> Anyway, you can see that there are, there are a few primitive tools that require rock. For example, the mortar and pestle, the primitive cooking pot, and the primitive crucible and stick. These, this tool here is used for smelting. 
which is another skill that I will get into in another tutorial. So, you're probably asking yourself now, I've probably eaten my cookies and my cooked meal. How the hell do I get my food? That's pretty easy, folks. That's pretty easy. All you have to do is walk up to a tree that looks exactly like this. I can hear a boar. I don't want to get killed while making this tutorial. You want to look for this tree. Now, if you look carefully, those are very low-res 2D apples, as you can see. See if, see if I crouch underneath it. <laughs> but anyway, this is an apple tree. So what you want to do is you want to right-click on it. You want to go down to nature's lore and you want to gather apples. So let's gather some apples. Now this might be... There we go, we just gathered nine apples. Sometimes you will fail to get apples. Sometimes what can happen is a large thud sound will sound. This basically means is the, the apple tree no longer has any apples on it. However, this doesn't mean it doesn't have any apples forever. This basically means that it has to respawn its apples. Each tree respawns its um, its resource. So, apple trees respawn apples. Mulberries, excuse me, mulberry trees respawn uh, silk cocoons used for making silk. Um, hazelnut bushes respawn hazelnuts. You can see where I'm going with this. The only thing that doesn't respawn is if you cut down that tree, it will no longer respawn. Do you understand what I mean? Cool. Right, so you've got your food. That's cool. We we'll eat some food. We've got our tools. What's next on the agenda? Well, I think you'll want to get some, you know, housing set up. The first set of housing that you're going to get in this game looks exactly like this. This is a tiny plaster shack. This is exactly what it looks like. It doesn't come any different sh shape or form. This is the baseline housing that you will get. It is basically the equivalent of a hovel, a very primitive hovel. Now watch this. Ooh. As you can see, it is quite detailed inside. It's pretty cool. But to make this, you need a specific skill. So, what skill do you need? First, you need to level up your artisan to level 60. Now, to do this, Artisan requires you to have your wooden spoon attached. We'll attach our wooden spoon. There we go, we've got our wooden spoon. Now, the easiest way to level this is to simply... Uh-oh, oh, that, that doesn't sound good. Oh, it's a boar. Odd. Anyway... Artisan requires you to right click the ground, go to your artisan skill, lower the ground level. As you can see, we've started a digging animation. When he stops. So if I bring my system up there, you have received fertile soil 30. I've received an item with the amount of 30. So if I open up my inventory, there it is right there. And what happens is, this levels up your artisan level. I'm at level 100 at the moment. I can't go any higher. I'm at the ma Grand Master level. So, you want to get to level 60. Level 60 is the requirement of any skill to advance to the next skill. So, as you can see, I'm level 66 in construction. If I was level 30 in, this con in, level 30 in construction, I wouldn't be able to advance masonry beyond 60. I'll detail this a wee bit in my blog, you'll be able to read this a wee bit better in depth. Anyway, so once you have unlocked level 60 artisan, you want to unlock level 60 materials preparation. The next possible skill you're going to require really. So let's drop this dirt right here. So as you can see I've dropped it, it's probably advanced the land up. So, next thing you want to do is you want to level your construction materials preparation. The easiest possible way to do this, gather a lot of clay, right? Gather lots of clay in your inventory, run down to the sea, right click the sea, 
and get water. Get lots of water. Once you have done that, I will show you exactly what you need to do. Watch this. I'm going to lower the ground level and get some clay. Now observe, I have 60 clay in my inventory. I don't have any water because I have to do this quite quickly. Right click it. Go to, go to materials preparation. Click mold. Now you will not have clay anvil or unfired jug. You will have unfired clay tile. Now it requires you to have 10 clay and one water. This creates clay tiles, or unrefined clay tiles, should I say. Basically, what you want to do here is click craft if you've got water in your inventory. This will level up your artisan, uh, your materials preparation re rather quickly. So from here, when you get to level 60 uh, materials preparation, what you can do now is go back to an area that you want to build on. Now this is the important part. This is the very important part. Can you see the tiles are all glowing green? This means they're flat. They are completely flat. They can be built on. Now if I show you a different tile here, do you notice these are grey? These are non-flattened tiles. These don't have any flattened area to them. I'm going to show you how to terraform flatland. Watch this, right? So find an area you want to build on. I'm going to find a relatively flat area because it's quick, it's easy, it's simple. Right, so read the levels of the ground. Find the one that's going to have the least amount of work involved in it. So I'm going to do this one right here. So go to Artisan, flatten the ground. He will then pick out how much he has to level out the, the land to be the same level as this tile you're standing on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand in that tile. Watch this. Notice how it goes a nice green colour. This is 28.9. This is your golden tile right here. Stand in this tile. Find another tile that's 28.9. Flatten the land. I've got assigned to my default key. And there we go. It's flattened out to the same level. We can do it to this level as well. 28.9. It is now flat. Here's a 28.8. What he's going to do is he's going to drop the soil that we had in our inventory to compensate for that level. Now if we left click again, it is now flat. Now you can do this to raised land. So for example, this is at 29.0. If I flatten this, it is basically going to take 0 0.1 levels off of the ground. So there you go, 28.9, we've received 30 soil, I can then flatten that area, and it's now flat, I now have a 1 by, or really a 2 by 2 area that is now completely flat. You will require a 4 by 4 area in order to create your tiny plaster shack. I'm going to show you right now, any yellow tiles? Mean that it can't means that it cannot be built. It cannot be leveled out to be built on. So what you need to do is you need to press F3 to bring up observer mode, and you need to bring four by four of these tiles to 28.9 or whatever level that you are actually working to. Once you have done that, it will glow green. I will go show you over here to the terraformed land that I did late uh, earlier today. So let me run past my little oak trees. So as you can see, I have a 4x4 right here. I'm going to create a tiny plaster shack. Use the directional keys that are supplied. And as you can see, everything is glowing green, which means green is good. Green is very good. As you can see, red occupied or blocked tiles. For example, tiles that have trees on them or stumps on them. Yellow, tr yellow uh, tiles are empty, unflattened tiles. So if I do this, do you see how it's not flattened? We can't build here. We can't build unless it's full green. And that is how you create your tiny plaster shack. When you, when you place it down, you will require it to have five logs 
and 150 clay. I hope this tutorial has helped you. If you did, if it did help you at all, hit the like button. If I missed anything out, comment away, ask some questions. If you feel that you need a hand, simply go on to my Twitter and send me a direct message and I will be more than happy to help you out. I hope this tutorial has helped you. I hope you can hear me. I hope this has been rather useful <laughs> because I have done it in quite a rush because I feel we were about to get attacked from a different clan. So, yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped you. I'm Mr. Feudal. Like, subscribe, send me a Twitter message if you need help. I'm out, folks. Thanks for watching.